Hi everyone. Um, I am standing between you, between you and lunch and between you and cake, so this is an uncomfortable space. <laughs> um, but I wanted to, first of all, uh, take the opportunity to thank you for having me back. Uh, it was uh, about a year ago, I think, that I, um, I was able to come join you and talk a little bit about my work at the foundation. And that was like, I don't know, maybe three months or so after I joined, even less. So I roughly didn't know what I was doing, like, you know, who anybody was. Uh, so hopefully this year you're gonna get a bit more sense out of me. Um, not too much, but a little bit more. Um, so uh, uh, what I'm gonna do today is um, certainly reflect a little bit on where we were a year ago and where we are now, uh, and also tell you a little bit about uh, what's happened this past year uh, at the foundation and how our plans uh, have evolved. Um, so I'll try and be uh, quick. Um, hopefully there'll be time for questions. I'm planning on staying around for another hour or so after my presentation so we can chat offline as well uh, if anybody has any questions. So um, first of all, reflecting on the past year, I wanted to, to say that uh, Cindy Cicalesi is now on the other side of the fence. So we actually have, for the first time ever, a bona fide product manager for MediaWiki, yay. Um, huge difference as we kind of, uh, as we begin really to look at what the foundation does, um, you know, with a, with a broader vision, not just, you know, an encyclopedia, but much more than that. Um, so this past year, the foundation has been a year of strategy making. Um, we have uh, many new people, including a new um, uh, executive director at the foundation. Uh, and also a board that has evolved uh, a great deal from um, the recent past. So one of the thing, one of the things that we asked ourselves is, uh, like, wait a minute, what are we all about? Uh, what, what should we be doing? Um, we had a strategy that uh, saw us through to the year 2015, roughly, and it was time to take another look and see where we're going to take uh, the movement, the foundation, what we should be doing to be responsive to the needs of our movement. Uh, so we spent a year, roughly, figuring out uh, what our strategy should be. Um, and you may think, you know, a year, really? Um, yeah, because um, the foundation really represents a movement, and we had a very, very broad um, consultation exercise with uh, just about everybody who could speak to uh, inside and outside the movement. So at the, end of, uh, at the end of that year, you know, we came up with a strategic direction that I want to share with you here, and then I'm gonna tell you what we're doing in order to start moving uh, ourselves in that direction. So our mission uh, at the foundation um, is, as you know, um, the spread of free knowledge to all human beings. Um, we want to imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. That's our goal. Um, and uh, for the most part, I think if you look back at the first 15 or so years of the uh, foundation and the movement, we've not done too badly. Uh, when you look at the, um, at the achievements of the community, uh, they are quite spectacular. The, the encyclopedias are present in around about 300 languages. There are over 45 million articles, and when you look at the edits, uh, they're in the billions. So we have clearly uh, a active and thriving community uh, of both volunteers as well as uh, committed employees that um, are bringing all this together. So, you know, if, if that's where you are, where do you go to next? Right. Um, so this past year, as I said, was a year of reflection. With all these great achievements, um, we also found out that we have gaps. Um, and I'll talk through some of these gaps real quick. Um, first of all, there's a much larger ecosystem than the one that we uh, either recognize or actively or properly or uh, engage well with. And um, frankly, the fact that you know I come here once a year, that you guys don't see 
the foundation in your day-to-day -day, day -day lives more frequently than that is an example of such a gap. Um, there's a larger ecosystem that we are part of uh, that includes not only our donors and our readers and the community um, projects, but there are fellow travelers both in the knowledge, in the free knowledge world, uh, as well as the creative community, as well as you know, other tech companies, um, social development organizations, and of course, organizations like this that leverage technology that we use, that we build and use for our own purposes, but then uh, also give back so that, you know, we're together, we are better. So clearly we need to learn how to work better uh, with the broader free culture movement. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope honestly to kind of be able to stand here a year from now and tell you exactly what we've done in that regard to begin to uh, create and to craft a more um, substantive and uh, productive relationship with groups like uh, the Enterprise Media Wiki uh, group. So that's one thing we need to fix. Um, what else um, is changing the world around us? Well, one of the things that's gonna change and is changing is um, how the world population is distributed. So if you look forward to 2030, there will be roughly 13% more people than we have today. Uh, but all this growth um, really is gonna be in Africa. Uh, in Africa and Asia, and the implication really for this is that we need to be able to adjust and be present in these new contexts, new languages, and also knowledge formats. Um, and while languages perhaps is obvious, but knowledge formats may not be, um, you know, we, we are very thoughtful about what knowledge even means. Uh, you know, is knowledge an encyclopedia? Is knowledge what sits, for example, in, inside of a, of a NASA wiki that tells people how to use a space station? Uh, is knowledge what lives within an ESA uh, set of documentation that tells you how to observe quality management processes? Yeah, you bet, all of the above. Uh, and we at the foundation don't really spend too much time thinking about these different knowledge formats. Uh, and, you know, one thing I know is um, as you uh, move your field of vision to a broader set, including, say, um, Africa, the knowledge formats that they will need to use to create uh, and also benefit from are going to be very different than what we have today. So we need to think about that as we ready ourselves for the next 15 years. The other thing that is pretty obvious and, um, you know, we, all we have to do is look at ourselves in this room. Um, the gender gap remains, and it remains not only in the contributors to our technology foundation, which is maybe like not that surprising, um, but uh, unfortunately is also very, very prevalent in our um, encyclopedia contributor base, which means, of course, that uh, we have uh, significant biases in our corpus, um, which is not great because we, you know, being as successful as we are and we are successful with the world's number five website, um, it means that we propagate these biases downstream and we propagate them by sharing that knowledge, but we also propagate them because our corpus is used and reused endlessly by other organizations that train their machine learning models on us, uh, which also, you know, creates the opportunity for those biases to be uh, force multiplied and, 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 and have them cause even more harm. So another thing that we need to think about uh, as we ready ourselves for the, again, for the, the journey ahead is how do we respond to this gender gap? What do we do uh, to begin to be a more uh, inclusive and more diverse uh, community? And perhaps the final gap, and I'm sure there are many more, but the final gap that we thought about uh, is mobile. Um, and, you know, I feel honestly fairly ridiculous standing in front of you here saying we're not good at mobile. And look at that picture. I mean, we're not good at mobile. Um, this, so this is the, what you see in red there is the number of edits that are done in the various wikis on mobile devices versus uh, desktop. So, you know, we are by far a kind of laptop desktop bound community of contributors. Um, and in reality is I mean, it's not just the next generation, everybody is mobile today. So, uh, you know, we are excluding a great deal of contributions from our, uh, from our products by not being present 
um, well, but not being effectively present in a mobile space. And certainly as we look at our aspirations, you know, to grow in, in what we broadly call the global south, you know, we know that many of these people will come to us uh, through broadband, they will come to us through mobile. They will never have a, uh, um, an internet connection in their house, any more than they have a telephone connection in their house. So if we don't solve this problem, we also exclude them from uh, the movement. So this is something that we also need to work on. So, you know, as I say, there are many more gaps that we have, but in our minds, these are, you know, some of the most critical fundamental things that we need to be thinking about as we begin to ready ourselves for the journey. So, um, what did we hear from our communities? What's our, our direction? So, we, um, we heard that we are an infrastructure for many things. We're not just an encyclopedia. And again, you know, looking at all of you here, I can, you know, I can, I can put a face to this, uh, to this statement. Um, we are, you know, in many ways, the infrastructure of open knowledge. Um, so we're going to be a platform uh, to serve open knowledge, and we want us to, and we want ourselves to be deliberate about it, not like you know, rely on heroic efforts by a few people uh, to make that true. But we're going to be very deliberate in how we support it by building tools for ourselves, our allies, and our partners. And also we're going to do that by enabling the use of new forms of knowledge, as I was uh, saying a little earlier. So that's one piece of our strategic direction. The other one that is uh, truly meaningful to us also is knowledge equity. And by that, um, we mean that we want to focus on knowledge and the communities that are left out by structures of power and privilege. Um, we're going to welcome people from every background. And also, we're going to work to break down barriers to access to accessing and sharing knowledge. And again, if you reflect on uh, the mobile conversation we've just been heading, uh, having, um, you can see what significant barriers exist in um, communities uh, that are not privileged in accessing our information if we don't, for example, have a uh, workable way for them to use mobile devices to come to us. So these are the two key directions that we decided we need to um, um, you know, march towards in order to build out the movement for the next 15 years. There's um, knowledge as a service and knowledge equity. So we have truly a lot of work ahead of us. And honestly, even if it wasn't for a new direction, we would have a, 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 a great deal of work. Uh, ahead of us. Um, I just stopped myself from using a cash word then. I, I was going to say something uh, a bit more salty than what I said, but we have a lot of work to do. Um, so, you know, when I kind of squint and I look at the future, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what all we'll be, we will be doing in the next 15 years, but there are, you know, four areas where I know we're going to have to make progress uh, in order to move forward. And these are broad areas where um, you know, we know we're going to have to do a lot more thinking and planning around um, in order to figure out the final plan. So first of all, looking at our infrastructure. So, uh, and by infrastructure, I don't just mean, you know, the, the physical plant, but also our software, our people infrastructure. We need to make some choices about our stack. And I know uh, Cindy spoke to you um, earlier in the conference uh, about the plans that we have um, to evolve our platform. Um, this is one of the, 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 the most significant, uh, this is going to be one of the most significant efforts that we undertake in the foundation this year. Um, you know, fixing once and for all many of the gaps that we have, and then, you know, getting ourselves to a place where we don't have to do heroics in order to catch up. You know? So, you know, like fixing some of the big things that went wrong in the past, and then making sure that we keep up. So that's one big thing. Um, we're going to work on Tech Foundation for Mobile, and again, if you ask me, you know, what does that mean? I don't know what it means today, but I do know it's something that we have to work on and fix. Um, I know that we'll have to scale, because if our ambition is uh, to reach the next billion, um, how are we going to do that? Are our structures, uh, even, you know, even fairly uh, mundane things like our, our data centers, are they um, able to take us where we need to go? There are also pieces that um, are perhaps not as obvious. Um, you know, our ambition to operate in all parts of the world also implies that oftentimes we have to serve communities that are at risk. 
Um, for example, uh, we, you, know, you, you probably know that uh, Wikipedia, in fact, all the, all, all the Wikimedia projects have been blocked in Turkey for over a year now. Um, there are many other communities where this is the case. And you know, our commitment is to every human being. It's not to every human being that lives in Europe. So we need also to make sure that uh, we figure out some solutions to make it possible for, um, for people in those geographies to enjoy um, uh, free knowledge. And you know, one of the things that David Strine in the back there has been working on is an offline version of Wikipedia. I'm sure you had an opportunity to speak to him about it already. It's an example of the kind of work that we're going to do uh, in that regard. So there will be a whole bunch of work around infrastructure. Um, the other pillar of our strategy um, from a, the technology perspective is open source. Um, and I just wanted here to, uh, you know, to reiterate our commitment to open source. We will always, 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 always make sure that the, the code that we build is openly available to others. And we don't do that for the goodness, you know, from the goodness of our heart. We do that because it's strategic for us. Uh, and it's strategic for us because only 78% of core commits come from staff. The rest comes from communities like yours. Uh, so we benefit a great deal by um, um, supporting the open source movement. It also is fundamental for us, again, serving our communities in the global south. You know, the foundation is not going to be able to go and put engineers, you know, in, um, you know, in Kenya. You know, we're going to have to have a community in Kenya that picks up uh, the open source tools that we build in, and adapt them to their own circumstances so they can build their own wikis and do the work that they need to do. Um, also, you know, within the foundation there's been um, a uh, kind of a, a debate for, I want to say, the last five years around MediaWiki, you know, the monolith and services and Node. Um, and I, you know, as, as Cindy probably already uh, told you, we are uh, committed to MediaWiki, and we are committed to MediaWiki because honestly, we have to. Right? I mean, you may dream big dreams, but like 99% of our traffic, both mobile web and desktop, I serve through MediaWiki. So you know, it's 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 uh, the lifeblood of our mission. Um, I also you know like to remind my engineers that. Um, you know, it's kind of cool to work on new things like Node, but uh, we're here first and foremost for our mission. Uh, plus, it's like other things are cool too. You can do services in other, uh, you know, in other languages. So it's not like this this exalted state that if you're really, really good and you go to heaven, that all you have to do is speak Node.js. I bet you there's COBOL hiding somewhere in heaven. <laughs> so um, it's like. Um, so open source is like a, uh, or hell maybe, should I say hell? Maybe it's hell. Maybe the cobble is hell, or purgatory, or some, some place there, yeah. Um, so uh, building infrastructure, uh, maintaining our commitment uh, to open source, then enabling technologies. A lot of the things that we're going to do, um, in order, for example, to, uh, to force multiply the productivity of our contributors would be around uh, building uh, capabilities and tools that are powered by machine learning. Um, so technologies like machine learning, natural language processing, uh, content translation, recommendations, uh, personalizations, accessibility in general. Suppose that you have somebody who you know, we cannot see. So you have having spoken interfaces, for example. We know that all that is in the future. And these are areas where we have very, very modest investments in the foundation today. So we know that we'll have to do something more in that regard. Um, and the, um, you know, the, kind of the, the, the last pillar here is community. Um, again, you know, I find it incomprehensible that we would ever succeed in our uh, mission. Uh, minus our uh, technical community, both inside and outside the foundation. So we're going to do everything we can uh, to strengthen this technical community and also uh, get them to the tools that they need in order to be uh, ready for the mission ahead. Um, so we're going to be more diverse and more inclusive. Um, we also want to um, you know, build strategies around the role of third party users like yourselves. Um, and also, you know, what companies should we be working with uh, 
to create some of the technologies to, that, that we need to support the mission. And I mentioned machine learning a moment ago. You know, we have like uh, 1.85 people, 1.85 people at the foundation working on machine learning today. That's it. We're the world's number five website. We have 1.85 people. I'd like to have more, and probably I can have um, five. Uh, I'm never going to be at the place where the Googles or the Facebooks or the IBMs or the Microsofts of the world are. So, you know, for us, it's fundamental to build partnerships with these people so that we can reuse technologies that they have and also influence to the extent that we can the tools that they build so that we can bring them back into our, um, into our um, you know, toolkit. So these are kind of the four broad areas that as we started thinking about um, what the strategy means for us, um, I was, uh, you know, I was uh, contemplating. Um, this is the time of year that we do our annual plan, so it's time to get started. So I wanted to give you a little bit of, a, of an insight into the kinds of things that we'll be doing this next year uh, to move us in that uh, direction. Um, so here's the big picture of how, we, uh, how we're going to do this. And it's kind of, for us, it's going to be a bit of a departure because uh, we've always in the past planned on strictly on a year cycle. You know, the way the, way the foundation works is we do our plan, uh, our fundraising team goes off and does, you know, the amazing work that they do. And again, you know, uh, with the, uh, the benefit of brilliant people like David Strine, you know, every year they seem to be able to raise the funds that we, that we need. Um, we spend those funds and then we start over again. Well, now it's going to be a little different because we're actually we're going to plan a bit more long term. So what we're going to be able to do is plan not only for this coming year, but also for the next three to five years. And for us, it's going to be you know, a little change in cadence. Like we don't know how to do that. We know how to plan on an annual basis, but we don't know how to do it more broadly. So you know, we're trying to be very thoughtful about how all that's going to come together. So as we look at the big picture, like I said, we spent this past year uh, figuring out what the strategy ought to be. Um, this year, 1819, and our fiscal year starts in July, um, this is going to be a transition year. So we know roughly what we need to, uh, to head to. Uh, every organization within the foundation is looking at its work and trying to figure out what do they need to do in order to start leaning in into that direction. We know that we can't move immediately, but we know how to, um, how to lean in. And then once we have that done, uh, uh, the, first, uh, the, the first year of the strategy proper is going to be, the implementation of the strategy proper is going to be 1920. Um, so what's going to happen this year is once we're done with our annual plan, which is kind of ongoing as we speak, uh, as soon as we finish with that, then we're going to uh, shift gears and start thinking about what the three to five year horizon needs to look like. And that's going to be kind of exciting and scary and like un unbounded because, again, we've never done it before, but it will be, I'm sure, a lot of fun. So uh, as we started doing our plan for, uh, for this year, our year zero, uh, our goal is to tend to the basics, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the work that we have to do um, to make sure that, you know, before we, we, we kind of dream big dreams, it's like we need to, uh, we need first of all, make sure that we have a solid foundation to build on. Um, and I just wanted to give you a, uh, just a little bit of a taste of what I'm talking about here. So the foundation, you know, for the longest time uh, did not have a great deal of engineering leadership, I want to say. And you know what that means is that really there was precious little attention paid to some of the fundamentals. Um, and what's really happened over the years is that um, if you take, for, for example, our, um, our tech ops uh, team, they pretty much stayed you know, the same size as they were when we got started back uh, in um, 08, 09. Um, but if you look what happened to the budget of the foundation, it has climbed, uh, which is great. Um, and that climbing budget also meant that other parts of the foundation, including engineering, have also grown. So the line at the bottom uh, shows you the growth of, uh, the, the blue line is the growth of staff, uh, the red line is the growth of engineering at the foundation. Now, if you are uh, Mark Bergsma and your job is to support everything that people build and give you to support, you're sitting there with the same people uh, 10 years on, 
And now you have um, two or three times as many engineers building things and dropping them on your plate. And all you can do is try harder to support them all. There's been virtually no investment in our capacity to support all these good things that these new engineers build and you know, throw over the fence. Um, so we have very significant gaps. Um, and I don't want to go through all this, uh, this miserable kind of list here, but things like you know, doing data backups. You would have thought, for example, like we have exquisite backups of our revisions. And we do have backups, but I tell you that the percentage of backup jobs that succeed uh, is not where I would like it to be. It's not where we would like it to be. Um, I mean, things like, uh, you know, we have like two data centers. So you could imagine that we can serve traffic out of both. So one goes down, and use the other. Or, you know, if we have too much traffic on one, we can all balance with the other. Well, not so much, no. Actually, we have two data centers, only one of them is active at any given time. Uh, and if we need to switch traffic, we have to do so manually. So, uh, you know, that's not the world's number five website. Yeah, that's not really what you want to be. So there is a whole bunch of, um, you know, fundamental things. Like, you know, we don't have a staging environment. So our engineers are in the position of, you know, doing whatever testing they can do, and then they throw their, um, you know, their, their, their changes to the whole of our traffic. And uh, I, again, for the kind of um, you know, the scale that we have, that is totally unacceptable. And you may think, how the hell did you get here? I apologize for the salty language. And you know, I, I, I don't know how you get to this point. I think somebody wasn't paying attention, but we are where we are. So again, from uh, my perspective, even though I would love to start doing lots of work around machine learning and you know, um, you know, building out uh, you know, capability in enabling technologies and so on, I know that the first thing I would need to do is fix this gap so that we can continue operating as we grow. So this is the kind of the, you know, the kind of first priority, and hopefully some of that is uh, reflected in our programs for this coming year. So I, this is a bit of a night chart, and I don't expect you to, to read it all. But I wanted to give you a sense for what, uh, for what, what our work in the technology department looks like. So we have a whole bunch of programs. All the work that we have is programmatic. In other words, every single piece of work that we do contributes to the mission in some, uh, some um, obvious uh, and defensible way. Um, and our programs come in four flavors. So we have foundational programs, and these are all about building the core platforms that we need in order to get our work done. So any work that we do, for example, in media, we give would fall in this category. Uh, then we have sustaining programs, and these are all about operating the infrastructure that we have. Um, then we have programs for supporting our community. Um, a lot of the work that we do in this space has, uh, is really forward-looking, understanding how communities work, uh, experimenting with uh, new tools that we could give them, for example, to um, uh, increase the capacity of editors to um, you know, both write articles, also to check revisions to articles and so on. Um, and then the, the last kind of bucket is work that we do to support the technical community inside and outside the foundation. So this is broadly how um, how it comes together, and you won't be surprised to, to see on the pie chart on the left there that most of the work that we do is in the sustaining category, uh, certainly for this coming year. You know, uh, hopefully, as we begin to redress some of these gaps, we can also redress that balance and perhaps do more work on our platforms. I would love to do more work on both our platforms as well as our communities. Um, now, I wanted to like to, to uh, do a quick uh, run through um, some of the, uh, do a little, a little bit of a deep dive in some of these programs to give you a flavor of what we will be working on. Um, and I'm going to start by talking about our two top growth priorities. And the first one is addressing the infrastructure gaps that I talked about just now. Um, and the second one is to support the evolution of our platform in order to fix this divergence of the WMF um, um, stack. And I, again, I'm sure Cindy spoke to you about this already, but you know, we're at a situation where we have two APIs to maintain, we have two parsers that we have to maintain, um, and uh, you know, I could go on and on. And you know, we don't have um, the time or the resources to be doing that. We pay a very heavy tax for, uh, for that kind of uh, divergence. Um, 
Here's a, a, a quick tour of some of our uh, programs now. So at the foundation, we have programs that are executed in one department, in which case in the, here you will see them as labeled as TPs. We also have programs that we execute um, in collaboration with other departments in the foundation. Those are called cross-departmental programs, CDPs. So we have such one, uh, one such program uh, uh, this year and will continue it next year on privacy, security, and data management, and this is something that we do in collaboration with our legal team. Um, this year we'll be expanding our team, um, and we have a, uh, a very brave soldier here, and Brian, that is part of that team. Uh, hopefully he will get some buddies to, uh, to, to work with <laughs> this coming year. Um, so you know, we want to be able to do things like provide a consistent and stable level of privacy in all our products. Uh, this is becoming more and more important for us. Um, as some of you know, you know we um, uh, sued the NSA for um, breach of privacy uh, the, in, in the upstream surveillance that they've been doing. Um, we also want, we also want to comply with uh, upcoming legislation in Europe, uh, GDPR. Some of you uh, from Europe will be very familiar with this. It's something that will be, um, you know, kind of really fundamental for us to get right. And I know it's something that also you probably, as users of MediaWiki and Wikis in general, are thinking about. Um, that's something that we. Um, um, we have within our sites that this team will be working on. And in general, we want to be able to build uh, our capability and our capacity around incident response, threat modeling, our ability to do code reviews, and so on. Uh, so this is you know, a, uh, a, an important uh, foundational piece of work that we're going to be doing. Oh, look at that. OK, somebody did this slide. They had fun. Um, the second one is platform evolution, and this is work that we're doing with our audiences department, who uh, used to be the product uh, organization, so they're responsible for building or user-facing uh, features. Um, a lot of work will happen here. Again, Cindy talked about this already, but you know, some of the highlights are that we're going to have a new API team and a new documentation team. And that, I think, is great news for those that use our um, APIs and also those that want to use our code because all of a sudden actually you will have some documentation to, uh, to look at. Uh, so hopefully this will fix things like fragmentation, maintenance burden, uh, developer impedance. You know, can you imagine what it's like when you bring a new person in that's never looked at this code? I mean, it takes many, many months for them to get up to speed. So hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll address that. Um, and our third CDP is around uh, knowledge integrity. And this is, a again, a fundamental piece of uh, of work for us um, for whatever reason um, Wikipedia is seen as uh, a fairly independent and reliable source of knowledge on the web uh, by many people um, I, I don't know if you keep up with the news but only this past week um, YouTube decided to put links in their videos that contain conspiracy theories to Wikipedia so that there is an alternative point of view to those that are taken by conspiracy theories. Uh, Facebook did something similar about six months ago, um, which is all to say that there is no better solution today. People come to us uh, to verify knowledge. So this notion of knowledge integrity, how do, how do we make sure that one piece uh, one piece of one, one claim is supported by, by evidence and by citations, uh, and how they're all linked, so you cannot be saying one thing over here and another thing over there, uh, is pretty fundamental. So we're going to start, we're going to get started this year with doing some research to understand how uh, our readers access sources and also to help contributors improve uh, the quality of the citations. Uh, we're going to do some work around our infrastructure, um, primarily to create tools that link information to external um, sources, catalogs, and repositories. Uh, also, preservation is really important, so we're working with the Internet Archive to make sure, for example, that we minimize the number of dead links in our, in our articles. Um, we will be doing outreach to work with um, um, others that uh, have similar objectives, and then also we want to raise awareness um, of the processes that um, our Wikimedians follow in order to verify information. Um, 
And then I'm going to run through again very quick through some of our programs. So there will be a lot, a whole lot of work being done um, under TPN on reliability, performance, and maintenance. And this includes hiring an engineer to support uh, media wiki related incidents, um, which we don't have today. In fact, um, I don't know if this was the case last year when I was here, but uh, when I arrived at the foundation, there wasn't even a media wiki team, which is pretty remarkable. Um, so we now have a small team and Cindy is part of it and we will be growing that team. Um, we'll be doing work around cleaning up our deployment pipeline and this is you know, both to accelerate deployment of code production but also to solve the staging problem that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so um, I'm very excited that, we, uh, uh, that we'll be seeing some of the fruits of this work that actually started last year uh, come into effect. Um, Another little thing that we have to do this year is migrate, back, uh, migrate our runtime back to uh, PHP 7 because uh, uh, Google decided to stop supporting uh, PHP uh, in, 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 in the HHVM uh, space. So uh, this was a bit of a curveball, but um, we will um, respond to it. Um, we will work to address our infrastructure gaps. Um, a uh, whole bunch of work that will need to be done here, all the way from having a proper kind of login infrastructure to having proper backups uh, to having a proper staging environment. Um, we'll do some work around developer productivity because you'll be surprised to hear, I was surprised to hear, all the tools that our developers use internally, they're all being developed by volunteers. There is like a single tool that was professionally developed and that creates a great deal uh, of uh, delay and friction in um, deployment of code. Um, code Health, we started a program last year uh, to, uh, to, to, to begin to tackle tech debt and we'll continue doing it uh, this year uh, by focusing on the simplicity, testability, buildability and readability of our code. Um, and this is the kind of the last thing I wanted to talk about here, um, technical community. It's kind of interesting that, you know, when I go to the foundation, people were talking about audiences. Um, well, three audiences. One of them being our donors, and it's kind of obvious. The other one is the, our readers. Um, and the third one is our contributors, folks that go and, and edit. Uh, guess what's missing? There's a vertical that's missing here, which is uh, developers. Right? So like, uh, what happened with that? Well, somebody wasn't paying attention. So we have um, really an audience that is not currently served. Uh, it's our intention to start building a, uh, a fully-fledged technical engagement team. Um, we will not be able to make all the investments that we need to make in that this coming year, but we're going to get started and um, you know, we'll continue building it out in the out years. Um, and that really is fully consistent with our strategy, right? So remember I talked about knowledge as a service has been one of, our, one of the, kind of the key tenets of our work. Um, and this is text that we that, uh, that I've taken right out of the uh, of the strategy. So we say we will build tools for allies and partners to organize and exchange free knowledge beyond Wikimedia. Well, like you can't do that if you don't have a dedicated team to do it. Um, the other part about knowledge equity, um, we you know we want to be able to break down the social, political, and technical barriers preventing people from accessing and contributing to free knowledge. And again, how are you going to do that if you don't have an organization that is focused on um, enabling or creating, enabling and supporting that community. So the goals of, uh, of our um, kind of budding you know, um, uh, audience here, and, uh, our technical engagement audience will be to reduce barriers to technical contribution. Um, we will focus to start with on contributors that are creating bots and tools. We're going to be able to attract and retain contributors to the, 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 our, our FLOSS projects. Um, and also we want to promote the use of, uh, of software uh, resources that extend the user experience beyond that provided by the core software. Uh, we want to support the use of Wikimedia services by foundation staff, community members, and third party consumers. Uh, we want to accelerate the onboarding process for new technical contributors, and we want to support the technical engagement with open knowledge producers and consumers by foundation teams. So this is a whole bunch of work. So when you, uh, you know, when you begin to look at what this team will have to look like, I think now we're like maybe one quarter staffed. So there's going to be a lot more resource that we will need to procure and apply to it. 
but uh, I am uh, completely kind of dedicated and uh, determined that this will be one of the areas that we will be seeing significant growth in in the out years. So stay tuned on that one. We may well come back to you to ask uh, for your input, for your advice, for your uh, uh, wish lists as we go forward. And with that, I wanted to bring it to an end and see if there are any questions about anything that I spoke about. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for that. The, the knowledge integrity I'm very interested in because infuriatingly when you're, if, you, if you're writing a paper you, you're not allowed to reference Wikipedia, they're absolutely strict <laughs> on that and, and actually yeah. a lot of times I think it's more of a reliable source than some scientific papers in terms of the collaboration that's gone into it and the referencing and it, it seems a real shame that, that there's no way of sort of say, looking at the articles and going actually I could you know, that is suitable to be referenced. Is, is there any thoughts on that? So, uh, yes, plenty. Um, so, I, I, first of all, you know, I understand why. Uh, our content is highly variable. There are areas of it that honestly are better than any textbook university level it would be, and there are others that are not. So, uh, I, I think for us to become, um, you know, citable, you know, uh, resources would have to be pretty uniform in the quality of what we have. And honestly, I don't know that we're ever going to be that because the whole point about Wikipedia is that you start with something that is a seed and then others come together and make it better. So, you know, maybe there's some way of, uh, uh, of you know, creating a grading scheme on articles and maybe some of them, you know, um, maybe they have five stars and they are quotable and so on, I, you know, I, I don't know. But what I do know is that, and, and, and this is my experience as a, as a researcher, so I started life as an academic, I used to publish papers, um, it's, it's linking knowledge that really matters, right? So knowledge integrity flows out of not necessarily peer review, because you can easily have a peer review article that you know, is full of inaccuracies, and we all know that that happens. Uh, it's actually the ability to link that piece of knowledge with other related pieces of knowledge. So one of the things that you know, we will be looking at um, you know, a great deal as we get started this year is this notion of linked knowledge. And in fact, you know, just earlier on, I was looking at the first deck that our product manager is beginning to put on that. And, and that, I think there's something really fundamental in that. Right? So, I mean, there's a, a web of knowledge out there where one thing, you know, is implied by the next and so on. So, I, I mean, my, my, my vision is that we have a kind of a, a collection of linked knowledge that where the connections really represent the, um, the relationship between the different pieces. And if there's something, you know, if you can, if you can start from node A on a graph and reach the terminal, node, that means that that argument is consistent. And I know this is not a vision that will be realized you know, in a year or two, but I think that's what, uh, that's what we want to aim for. Um, I will also say that um, sometimes you know, knowledge integrity is in the eyes of the beholder. So I, I, uh, I recently joined the board of directors of PLOS, the Public Library of Science, which as you know, in and of itself is creating a very different way <coughs> Of, uh, of publishing, where the, the bar is about sound science versus uh, necessarily peer-reviewed science. So I think uh, broadly there is a movement to really comprehend what the internet and connectedness has given us in terms of knowledge, right, which transcends the, the, the um, you know, the, the Elsevier's and the, you know, journals of the world so far. So I think, you know, again, stay tuned. I think this is a very, very important piece of work that we have to do. There was an area that you haven't discussed, and maybe it's 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 outside the scope of that. But but it occurred to me that if you're looking at the the foundation for free knowledge, that there are organisations that actually make paid for knowledge become free, and mm -hmm. and the the one that's most immediate is the is the public library, and mm -hmm. the public library basically buys books and makes them freely available to people. Right. But it's also happening on the electronic content. Yeah. And I wondered if you had looked at the, the whole, this whole um, distribution of paid-for content 
In other words, all the current periodicals are all online. They're, they're, all, they're all produced in electronic form. Yeah. They're not available immediately. They're on behind the, the paywall, though. Yeah. On the internet. But you can actually go to your public library and you can get a subscription to this service, a free subscription to this service that you can get from home. Mm -hmm. And it's very limited. But this is the sort of transition that says, wait a minute, now all this information that's, that's edited and published in, in Time Magazine, or what, it's all available, it's all out there. Uh, but it's not, it's not freely available. But right, it because, be. it, because it's bounded in many cases by copyright rules, right? In cases where it's bounded by copyright rules. Uh, in some cases where uh, uh, copyright is more friendly, uh, company, companies, organizations like the Internet Archive actually do precisely that. So yes. they have a list of books that, and I've seen them, I've seen the actual the machine that they use in order to, di to digitize that content. So I think there is definitely a movement in that regard. Uh, we at the foundation have worked really hard this past year on liberating citations. Um, so something like 46% or something growth in the overall number of citations that are, you know, can be, uh, can be made available openly has happened. I think there's a movement. And again, the PLOS, the Public Library of Science, is, a, um, is an example of people coming together and saying this old model, you know, it doesn't serve us well there, you know, anymore. Yes, yes. Um, but it seems there's a, there's a transition happening yeah. there that could suddenly make a huge amount of knowledge available, which is, right. which is quality, qu uh, quality knowledge has never been made freely onto the internet. Uh, right. Right. Uh, and you won't be able to be there to, um, to catch it, right? When, when the, when the yeah, speaker that's opens, I'm going to have the scale of the infrastructure that you can actually the, grab it. And the copyrights are quite, quite, uh, are quite tricky yeah. because the copyrights are often geographical area. So, so yes. they get a copyright to distribute in the United States. And, and then you, you look at the, the internet mechanisms and can you actually control that uh, in, in order right. to meet the copyright, right. yeah. And of course you cannot, as you know, <laughs> if, well, there, if you, there's you, a way of doing that. There, there, was a way of, there is a way of doing this and it depends how you distribute the access to the service and one of them is through the public library and the public library issues the grant to the person as long as they live in the United States and it can be done mm -hmm. through, U, uh, through the US public libraries and that's how they, they meet the yeah. copyright. So uh, I, I, I completely agree with you and as I was saying one of the things that we have to explore is partnerships with institutions like that because there's a much broader ecosystem around free knowledge that we don't work with today and we should because that will further the mission significantly. Yeah. Question back there? Both the philosophy of the, of the Wikimedia Foundation and the nature of MediaWiki as a tool are consistent with the sustainable development goals that were announced by the United Nations a couple of years ago. Is there any conscious emphasis within the foundation to, of what can be done to, uh, to advance or at least support progress to those goals? Uh, so, you know, there's this saying that the tide goes out and sometimes your pants are down, so this is one of those situations. I, I don't know what these initiatives are, so if anybody, Cindy, do you know anything about that? Uh, the, the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. I am not familiar or aware. Um, I, again, I will say what I said earlier. There are significant gaps in our understanding of the free knowledge ecosystem and how to best work with it, and I will put this in that category. But thank well, you for pointing you're, it you're, out. You've, uh, you've already, do, even if you weren't, weren't, you're doing things as a foundation that, that really are consistent with that. How does uh, Wikidata fit into the Wikimedia Foundation goals? So Wikidata is our, uh, one of our most important projects. It has been growing very, very quickly. Um, and actually, you know, one of the kind of strategies that we're working on as we speak, more or less, is what, um, what should the strategy be for Wikidata? Because it's been around for about five years. You know, some people would say it, should, you know, it, it gets, it, it's getting to be ready for, to, to graduate. And the question is, you know, what, will, what job will it do? So will it be uh, there primarily to support uh, the encyclopedias? 
Uh, will it be there to support institutions? Um, uh, will it be there to provide APIs for others? Will it even be there to uh, provide services on those APIs for others to use? And honestly, we don't know the answer to that. Um, we are, what we're doing is um, continuing to involve Wikidata and the structures underneath it as part of a, um, of, a, of a grant that we received from the Sloan Foundation called Structured Data and Commons. So where we try to, you know, to marry Wikidata with, uh, with Commons. Uh, so we're doing that fundamental work. And in the meantime, we're also trying to figure out this more strategic question about what do we expect Wikidata to do? Because one of the most obvious things is that, one of the most obvious questions is that of sustainability. So Wikidata is, of course, is its own you know, very vibrant community, but uh, it is funded virtually exclusively out of uh, Wikipedia proceeds. And one of the questions that, of course, you, know, you have to, to, to think about is, if that is the case, should the primary uh, beneficiary of the uh, Wikidata product be the encyclopedia. And if that's the case, then the next thing that you have to think about is how does that work with the community of contributors that um, are putting together Wikipedia. So it's a, it's a complicated question, but it's very much something that we are um, really all over at this point, both, uh, both Wikidata and also I want to say Wikibase, because I talked earlier about linked knowledge and we'll look at Wikibase as the really the foundation around which we can start building this uh, this kind of knowledge web, if you like. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned some of the technical changes coming forward and like the change back from HHVM to PHP 7 or I know Kubernetes was uh, up there on the slides. Right. And lots of businesses either have their business relying on MediaWiki as a core of their platform techno uh, technologically of course, there's consultants. Of course, there's other third parties who are trying to keep keep up to date with uh, yeah. me, with MediaWiki evolve evolving over time. What would you say is the best way to gain uh, visibility into those changes and also to have a voice into those um, in, in that direction? That's that's an excellent question, and I you know one that I would uh, pant over to um, uh, to Cindy and, not, and and not to put Cindy on the spot, but this is precisely why we have a product manager and a product manager that we kind of picked because she had very strong links to this community. So, you know, we're going to make sure that uh, what you think, what you need uh, is represented as we figure out our roadmap. So please, you know, uh, be vocal. And I think Cindy is the right, you know, kind of point of contact for all this. Uh, but also, you know, it's, it, it behooves us to communicate back to you because I don't know how much of the work that we do um, is visible to you, you know, through the year. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's nice to see me once a year, but, you know, your, your needs you know, don't, don't stop in the interim. Um, and that's, you know, that's part of the outreach that we want to do with this technical engagement team, right? So, and also, um, like, so they want to engage, but what are they going to engage with? One of the kind of key outputs of the platform evolution um, CDP will be producing documentation and keeping it up to make sure that you know people that rely on our uh, on our code base are actually served as well as we are. And again, you know, we're not doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. We're doing this because you know that community makes significant contributions back in the code base that we leverage. So we you know we don't have to hire another 20, 30 engineers. Did you want to say something, Cindy? Basically, well, first of all, yes, what you said, absolutely. Um, <laughs> what you said. And I, I think I've said this before several times this, in, this week. I've said it in previous meetings like this. Um, absolutely, I'm here, um, available for everybody um, for bi-directional communication, both you know, to the foundation as well as back. Um, I participate, um, we've, I don't know if we've talked enough about the MediaWiki stakeholders group this week, um, but I participate actively in the MediaWiki stakeholders group. We have a monthly telecon where um, we get together and we talk about these issues and others. And um, absolutely feel free, anybody to reach out to me personally at any time with any questions, any comments, any feedback, any desires. And um, I'm here for you all, as a, and I understand the domain that you're working in and the constraints of it, and it is my goal, as it is your goal, as it is the Foundation's goal, to make this a active 
and um, fruitful collaboration. Thank you. Was there one more question over here? Uh, on day one of the conference, we were all asked uh, if we had to change the MediaWiki logo to something else. What would we? What would it be? Uh, so, what would if if you had to change the logo? Uh, what what would you choose? So okay, so I, I'm an engineer, right? I mean, and I I didn't go into engineering because I was good at art. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I like kittens. Probably would be a kitten, or maybe the goat. I, I don't know. The, the goat that uh, uh, that Brian uh, Davis came up with. That's kind of cool. So maybe the goat. <laughs> Don't quote me on that, though. <laughs> but I, I don't know where the sunflower um, sunflower came from, and what was what the provenance of that is. But it's very striking visually. Um, so we'll we'll leave it to the product managers to figure out if a new visual identity is needed in this uh, you know in, in this view. Yeah. If you saw the logo we're using for this conference, somebody said it looks like we're in the ag conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, it's not what you're saying is it's not just me that is challenged visually. I mean, the reason why we became engineers is because we were not good at much else, really. <laughs> All right. So um, with that, maybe I will just uh, thank you so much for your attention and your uh, your hospitality. Um, I look forward to continue working with you for the rest of the year, and certainly if you're kind enough to invite me next year, I'll come and board the pants of you next year as well. So. Thank you.